Hello everyone. This video will focus on uh, the topic of diatonic modulation and we'll talk through an analysis of a Bach chorale. So this is the handout that is available on Canvas. Um, it's the title of the handout is Diatonic Modulation. It talks about first what a modulation is and these this is should be a review from all of the Edpuzzle videos and the textbook reading that you've been doing so far. Uh, modulation is a change in tonal center and modulations that we've been talking about occur when things move to a closely related key. And a closely related key is one that differs from the original key by one accidental and it includes both major and minor keys and you have an example on this handout. Um, a way to accomplish a modulation, one that we've been talking about discussing recently, is to use a common chord or a pivot chord. The pivot chord is one that functions diatonically in both the original and the new key. So the pivot chord naturally occurs in both keys. So we'll now analyze this Bach chorale. i will play you a recording first of the excerpt that you have, and then we'll talk through it. where your excerpt ends. You may have seen in the video that I added a few little phrase markings um, at the points where I heard cadences. So let's see where we are with keys. The opening, I see an A minor triad on B1 and no sharps, no flats. It sounded like tonic to me in the opening, so I'm going to say that's a one chord. I also heard at the end of measure two that it sounded like an authentic cadence, and we have an A minor chord at that point as well. If I back up from the cadence point in measure two and look at the chord before it, I see I have E's, I have a B in the soprano, and then I have my choice of A or G in the tenor. I see that the A is suspended over and the G sharp, that's a G sharp, based on the accidental from the beginning of the measure. The G sharp then comes in on the end of three, making this a five chord with a four, three suspension. And that root position five going to root position one with tonic and the soprano makes this a PAC. At the end of measure four, I have another cadence point. I didn't get the sense that we changed keys, but I don't see an a minor chord there under the formata, you see an E major chord, and within A minor, E major makes sense as five, and this is a half cadence at that point. Looking ahead then, at the end of measure six at the next formata, I have a C in the soprano, an E in the alto, a G in the tenor, and a C in the bass. This is no longer an A minor chord, but C major at this point. A C major chord, it's not A minor, it's not tonic anymore, so I need to ask myself the question of whether I'm tonicizing C at this point, whether I'm modulating to C, or whether something else is going on. So if I look at the chord before it, on beat three of measure six, I see two G's in the bass, I see a G up in the alto that has a little um, passing motion leading to the final chord in the measure. I see a D in the soprano, and I see a C to a B. That the C looks like it's suspended and then resolves down to the B in the, in the tenor voice. 
So it's very similar in to measure two with the a four three motion suspension that happens in the tenor. Looking at this chord, I see a G major chord if I ignore those embellishing tones. So I have G, I have B, and I have D. G major, C major, G major going to C major. Um, G major is the five of C. So we can probably assume that we have modulated to C major here. Then the PAC in C major, which is the median related to A minor. So it's a PAC in three uh, related to A minor. All that three means is that three is C major within the key of A minor. Okay, so we have identified um, our new key area. We know where we're coming from. So let's focus on measures five and six since that's where our modulation is going to take place. Measure five still begins in A minor because we have an A minor chord on that downbeat. The next beat, I have a G in the bass. That G goes to F. I have a D and I have an A. I need to figure out what fits and what doesn't here. Um, D, F, A, I can arrange in a triad, but that G seems to be out of place. And if that's the case, then I know I have a passing tone in that bass line. Um, D, F, A within the key of A minor is my four chord. D is four in the key of A, and the F in the bass makes this a first inversion chord. Moving to beat three, I have E, G, E in the bass, G in the soprano and the alto. And then I have a D and a C in my tenor line. Looking at what's going on here rhythmically, I see that that D is suspended over beat three and then resolves downward to the C. So that D is not going to be part of that analysis for the Roman numeral, but this is a suspension and it is a seven, six suspension based on the intervals above the bass. E to D is a seventh, and E to C is a sixth. So I'm left with C, E, G as my chord, or E, G, C, if you prefer to just look at what I've written above the staff here. C, E, G is three in A minor, and it is in first inversion because the E is in the bass. I can continue in A minor Keep going, F, A, C on the next beat on beat four. And then I see E and G after it, sort of the E in the bass acting like a passing tone, the G acting as a neighbor tone in the uh, alto voice. F, A, C within the key of A minor is six. But I know I'm eventually gonna go to C major. C major and A minor are relative keys. At this point, in A minor, I've had tonic, I've had a predominant chord, and then I'm moving to these chords that really aren't dominant. There are tonic, they sort of are tonic expansion chords, but they're sort of looking a little funky. So I'm gonna continue one more, one more beat and see what I have. Um, I have a D in the bass on beat one in measure six. I have a C and a B. I have an A, another D, and then an F. Um, in this, again, I look in the tenor voice, I see that C that's suspended over, matching what happened in measure five. This is again another suspension, and there's another seven, six suspension. So I'm gonna ignore that C in my analysis. I can include the A uh, because this is then B, D, F, A. In A minor, B is two. B, D, F, A is a half diminished seventh chord and this would happen on scale degree two in A minor and it is in first inversion. So this is a two half diminished six five. 
This is looking really funky to me, um, given what we know about chord progressions. Do sixes usually go to two half diminished chords? And the answer to that, in my mind, is like this looks a little funny to me. And I know that I'm modulating, so I need to find where that modulation happens. So I'm going to use the trick of moving backwards. I know I'm ending in C major. I know I end with a tonic chord, and then I have a dominant before it. Um, I'm actually going to move and write these chords in a different color so we can see this modulation. So there's my one chord, there's my five. Oops. Let's try that again, sorry. Five, four, three, to the one. And I'm going to look now on the, the chord on beat two. I have an E, a C, an E, and a G. And then that F in the bass is a passing tone. So C, E, G here. C, E, G in my new key is tonic. It's a one, one, six, because that E is in the bass line. And if I back up to that B half diminished chord, that two half diminished six, five in A minor, can I reinterpret that in the key of C major? And does it make a little bit more sense in that context? The answer is yes, B is the leading tone of C major. So this is a leading tone chord, half diminished, and it is in first inversion. That chord is functioning in C major as its uh, leading tone. It's no longer functional as the two chord in A minor because that two is not proceeding onto a five chord. Um, so I need to back up one more chord and see if I can find a pivot. So I know that at this point, that C7 half diminished six five, that B, D, F, A chord, this is the leading tone chord. It's no longer functioning in A minor. So that's the moment where I've already shifted. Back up one chord and we can find a pivot. So the chord on beat four in measure five is that F major chord. Well, F major is four in C major. And that could be our pivot. We could back up more to that three six, which is then the one six in C major. But it's always nice to pivot on a chord that can function as a predominant in the new key area. So my four is my new predominant. That seven starts a dominant area. And then we end with that tonic. So let's listen to this again. So we kind of hear what, how this pivot chord is working. I might talk through a little bit of it as well as, as the recording plays. C and A minor. Half cadence. That half cadence sounds very incomplete. major. Sure. 